firing squad. The chief of Russia's private army, Evgeny Prigozhin, saying he's certain there will soon be major Russian losses on the battlefield in Ukraine and a loss of territory inside Russia. And Prigozhin predicts that those losses will be so significant that firing squads will be ordered to execute the generals responsible for Russian failures or to crush a popular revolt that will rise up over the military's mistakes. We will now suffer serious losses. I am absolutely certain of it. Now we are certainly losing some Russian territory, this part being in the Russian Federation. There will either be a popular revolt or the State Duma will make a decision for capital punishment and gun them the f down. And by the way, I can tell you honestly, I think we're two to three months away from the firing squads. This comes as Ukrainians are making gains around the key city of Bakhmut. And Sam Kiley is out front. Ukraine's 3rd Assault Brigade is in action near Bakhmut. And they claim they're making advances around the city. But their attack is dependent on Soviet-era weapons. Modern equipment from the USA and NATO is apparently being held in reserve for a Ukrainian offensive. Do you have a name for your grad? Is it good enough for this fight? Ukraine gets no help at all with aircraft. Not so far. This Soviet-era helicopter is ancient, but in combat almost every day. Flying dangerously low to avoid missiles and Russian jet hunter killers. These aircraft will fly more sorties as fighting intensifies in a relentless cycle of war. Ukraine has now got added rage at what it's calling a Russian ecocide. This part of Kherson has suffered Russian bombardment across the river for months, now near total destruction from upriver. Russia is widely blamed for the collapse of the dam at Novokakovka, which has been under its control since March last year. Civilians who survived the Russian occupation of their town and an offensive to free it are now facing down a new horror. Thousands have no drinking water. Here, a drone delivers help, an adaptation of a system originally designed not to save life, but to take it. Now, Erin, these recent successes that the Ukrainians are claiming may well be in part as consequence of effectively mutinous behaviour by Mr Prigozhin, who just the other day captured uh, the commander of the 72nd Mechanized Brigade, a Russian brigade, the neighboring unit to Wagner in Bakhmut, uh, beat him up, forced him into uh, a, an online confession in which he was told to say that he'd been drunk and opened fire on Wagner troops. It's just that kind of collapse of uh, law and order within the Russian ranks that the Ukrainians would be absolutely delighted by. Uh, if you couldn't, if Prigozhin didn't exist, I think the Ukrainians would have wanted to make him up. Erin? <laughs> it, it, it is unbelievable. It defies belief. All right. Thank you very much, Sam, reporting live from Kyiv tonight. And let's go now to the former U.S. ambassador to Russia, John Sullivan. And Ambassador Sullivan, I'm so glad to have you back. So, you know, it, it, Sam's talking about what the Russians do. You know, they they have control of that dam. In fact, they have had control of that dam for months. And now they haven't provided a single shred of evidence, but they are keeping up a narrative that it is Ukraine's fault. This does seem absurd. It seems to defy credulity, does it? Absolutely, Aaron. And, and you hit the nail on the head. They're in control of this dam because they invaded Ukraine in February of 2022. This war would end. There would be no dam collapse if the Russians hadn't invaded Ukraine. It's ultimately Russia's fault. So you obviously saw Putin, you knew him, up close as ambassador to Russia. So better than anyone, you have a sense of how he operates, how he thinks. You've got uh, a counteroffensive now seemingly, uh, you know, in full swing. You have attacks on Russian territory. 
Uh, you've got Prigozhin saying all sorts of things. What is Putin's mindset like right now, as best as you can imagine? Well, I think from his background and his training going all the way back to his KGB days, he would never show it. The more difficult it gets, uh, the cooler and calmer he will try to appear. But he is under enormous stress now, Aaron. There's, there's no doubt about that. Secretary Blinken recited in a speech last week in Helsinki how this war has been a strategic catastrophe for Putin and Russia. And day by day, whether it's the dam collapse, uh, whether it's Prigozhin, the head of, as you accurately described it, Putin's private army, talking about senior Russian generals being executed, this is calamitous for Russia and for Putin. And let's talk more about what Pr Prigozhin said, right? He predicted those firing squads in Russia within two to three months, which would target Russia's top generals, Putin's generals. He also suggested Putin might detonate a nuclear weapon in Russia in Belgorod, uh, to, I don't know whether it was a false flag or what, but he said that. He, he's claimed to take a Russian commander, uh, a top Russian commander, hostage as a POW. I mean, this seems to be reaching some sort of a breaking pit, a breaking point, even for someone uh, whose actions and words have frankly been, been quite shocking for a long time. It, they have been, Aaron, and it's just a, it's, it's a, a, uh, a growing cascade of... Uh, crazy statements by Prigozhin. I mean, months ago, he was calling the Minister of Defense and the Chairman of the Russian General Staff cowards and traitors, and their children cowards and traitors. And it's just been a further escalation. Every time he speaks, there's something more outrageous that he says, in part to get attention. But the important thing to note, Aaron, is how dependent Putin is on him now. You described in the opening of this segment, this is Putin's, this is his private army. The success they had in Bakhmut, the Russian government itself, just a couple of weeks ago, attributed, attributed that success, at least in part, to Wagner. So Putin's dependent on those soldiers that Prigozhin leads. It's amazing. All right, thank you very much, Ambassador Sullivan. I appreciate your time, as always. Thanks, Aaron. And next, former Vice